Paul's letter to Titus. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth which is according to godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who can't lie, promised before eternal times, but in his own time revealed his word in the message with which I was entrusted, according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, my true child according to a common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. I left you in Crete for this reason, that you would set in order the things that were lacking and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. If anyone is blameless, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, who are not accused of loose or unruly behavior. For the overseer must be blameless as God's steward, not self-pleasing, not easily angered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for dishonest gain, but given to hospitality, as a lover of good, sober-minded, fair, holy, self-controlled, holding to the faithful word which is according to the teaching, that he may be able to exhort in the sound doctrine, and to convict those who contradict him. For there are also many unruly men, vain talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped. Men who overthrow whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for dishonest gain's sake. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and idle gluttons. This testimony is true. For this cause, reprove them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess that they know God, but by their works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and unfit for any good work. Chapter 2 But say the things which fit sound doctrine, that older men should be temperate, sensible, sober-minded, sound in faith, in love, and in patience, and that the older women likewise be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, nor enslaved to much wine, teachers of that which is good, that they may train the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sober-minded, chaste, workers at home, kind, being in subjection to their own husbands, that God's word may not be blasphemed. Likewise exhort the younger men to be sober-minded, in all things showing yourself an example of good works, in your teaching showing integrity, seriousness, incorruptibility, and soundness of speech that can't be condemned, that he who opposes you may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say about us. Exhort servants to be in subjection to their own masters, and to be well-pleasing in all things, not contradicting, not stealing, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men instructing us to the intent that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we would live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good works. Say these things and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no man despise you. Chapter 3 Remind them to be in subjection to rulers and to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, not to be contentious, to be gentle, showing all humility toward all men. For we were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love toward mankind appeared, not by works of righteousness which we did ourselves, but according to His mercy He saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, which He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we might be heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This saying is faithful, and concerning these things I desire that you affirm confidently so that those who have believed God may be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men, but shun foolish questionings, genealogies, strife, and disputes about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. 
avoid a factious man after a first and second warning, knowing that such a one is perverted and sins being self-condemned. When I send Artemis to you, or Tychicus, be diligent to come to me in Nicopolis, for I have determined to winter there. Send Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey speedily, that nothing may be lacking for them. Let our people also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they may not be unfruitful. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in faith. Grace be with you all. Amen.